I began my search on one of the remotest stretches of Costa Rica's Pacific coast, where the rainforest meets the sea. This is one of the most pristine pockets of rainforest anywhere in the world, and prime habitat for giant lancehead vipers. There are no roads here, but I could use the rivers to penetrate the otherwise impenetrable forest. My journey took me deep into Costa Rica's dark interior. Lanceheads have an extremely potent tissue-destroying venom. They also strike more readily than most other vipers. This is what makes the lancehead especially deadly. I knew I was several days from the nearest medical attention. I absolutely could not afford to get bitten this time. You hear that? Those are capuchin monkeys, and they're alarm calling. That means there could be something going on. I'm just gonna go and check it out. Like all monkeys, white-faced capuchins make alarm calls at any sign of danger. I've seen this many times back home in Africa with other monkey species, and quite often there's a snake involved. It could be that these capuchins had seen something on the ground. I got it. Oh yes, baby. Look at the size of this. This is what I've been looking for. I'm gonna have to let go, clear the decks for a second. Oh man, this is a giant without any question. Watch the tail. She's actually rattling the tail because she's getting upset. And it's a warning that you're coming too close, similar to a rattlesnake might do. Actually rattles its tail and if it does that in between leaves, it sounds just like a rattlesnake. Okay, now what I really, really want to do, she seems well behaved, I'm gonna take the chance. I shouldn't really be doing this, but I really want to have a look at the snake's fangs. Lance heads are famous for striking with very little provocation. And that snake was no exception. I was trying to be gentle, but I could just sense that she was getting ready to strike at me. Things were about to get really tricky. Ah, ah, okay. I'm very nervous about getting this snake by tail. I'll tell you what I'm going to do in my kit. I always carry this with just in case. If I want to show the snake's fangs, the best thing I can do is allow it to bite of its own free will. And the best way to do that is like they milk snakes for venom extraction. She's starting to realize that I'm the problem and looking at me all the time. Wow, I don't know how I'm gonna get my hand on this head. She's very clever as well. See this how she watches me all the time? Got it. I've got it. Oh my God, did you see that? Did you see that? That scares me. Those fangs are already. This is why you've got to get a snake like this. Behind the head, exactly right. She's too big. I've got to help myself on this rock. Just hold on. Okay. Because the head is so enormous and the body is so powerful, she's injecting venom. She's just squirting venom. I've got to get her into my lap. It's only way I'll control her. All right, she's so keen to bite. I'm just going to let this happen, okay? because I've got this far now, I can't let go now without getting nailed anyway. I just gotta keep my hands really out the way. Let's see what happens. Okay. Oh my God. I'm nervous of this. It's good. Ah. Yes. Ah. I mean, I'm used to working with venomous snakes, but this is phenomenal. Look at the amount of venom that's in there. Can you see that? It's like a blooming orange drink. Wow. Man, I'm so, I'm just too, too riled up about this. I've got to just relax. I want to bring these fangs out of it, see if we can see them. Oh, she's enormous. Nobody wants to get something like that into them. God, I think the stab alone will kill you. Let go, let go. She doesn't want to let go. Oh, man. 
uh, half the fang is exposed. It's so enormous. There's a second fang on the right. Look on the right, there's two fangs sticking out. Can you see that? That's the new fang moving forward to replace the old fang. God, these things are as thick as knitting needles. The sheaths, of course, cover the fang and protect them when it's folded up against the roof of the mouth. There's enough venom there to kill not a dozen people, two dozen, I'm telling you right now. Because a scratch from the snake, just a scratch could probably cause your death. Oh man, I've never been this nervous of a snake in my life. And I'm just holding it, she's not pulling at the moment, I'm just using her while I can. And I'm gonna have to let the snake go because I can't hold it much longer and sooner or later she's gonna jerk. And I've gotta let this go correctly, otherwise she's definitely gonna nail me in the hand. And the only way to do that is a quick release, I'm gonna stay with the tail. Okay, wow. I'm normally not so nervous for a viper. Ever present was the thought that this was one of the deadliest snakes I'd ever handled. I wanted to move the snake to where I could photograph it, but with its incredible striking reach of over four feet, that snake was easily capable of lunging straight past my tongue. When I confront a snake, dangerous or otherwise, my whole idea is to just position the snake as best I can to get a decent photograph of him. If he's in a shaded place and I think, oh, I'd love to get this in the sun, I want to catch that snake, but I'll bring him to a sunny area and photograph him there. Okay, so many times I have to move the snake, but he just does exactly what he does. You can't make a snake do anything he doesn't want to do. When he wants to go, he wants to go. And if I've got to grab him, put him back, I'm risking my life to do that, so I must know what to do, and I must do it gently. Sometimes I have to use my tongs to move snakes or get them out of places. Now, these tongs are so well designed, and because the lever stands up like this, you can always rest the snake on that and you don't have to you don't clamp the snake at all you hold the snake's tail yeah he automatically goes through the lever and he holds on there himself like he's holding on a branch and that's brilliant wow she's so heavy she's so heavy but now unlike a cobra where i could normally come really close because i can judge the cobra's distance this girl could strike from there and reach me here with no effort at all so the trick here is to move as slowly as possible I don't know what she's going to do when she has the flash in her eye. Let's just see. Okay, so I mustn't be stupid now. Okay, she's good with it. No reaction. Unbelievable. She's got her eye right on me. Wow, isn't that incredible? She's so well behaved. There must be one more. Come on, okay. there you go, where are you going? Whoops, oh, she's going a little bit over the edge. Okay, okay. whoops, all right, where she got there, I'm on her, I'm on her. Okay. This was the worst possible place to deal with her. However, do not try this at home. There she comes, looking straight at the lens, no problem. Better get a bit of land, there she's coming straight. She's busy concentrating on getting, getting her coils together, so it's no problem. There we go, this is fantastic. I'm going to do a shot like this. Fantastic. I'm so pleased. I've seen amazing stuff. But this is the ultimate. A snake like this. The most dangerous snake. Reputed to be so incredibly aggressive. And such a size. Look at that. I'm going to let it go. And we're going to let her swim off on her own. Because she's done it for me. I don't want to rattle her any more than she's rattled it. Off you go, girl. I had successfully photographed one of the deadliest snakes in the world. And a massive one at that. After 30 years of hands-on experience, I am acutely aware of the venom toxicity of snakes like these. And the next snake I encountered would be no exception. Western diamondback rattlesnakes are one of the deadliest snake species in America. And I would have more than just one snake to contend with. I was going underground to photograph dozens of them in their winter dens. I've been practicing martial arts almost as long as I've been working with snakes. I consider it an art form, but it also helps me